the intensity is there every moment and, and it, it just feels blissful. It feels orgasmic. You become orgasmic. You don't strive for an orgasm. You become the orgasm. And, and that's what we need to teach men, as you said, because if the man realizes that he is, he is the source of that pleasure and he can always have access to that pleasure, he is that pleasure. Men, how can your sexual energy elevate your purpose, your dreams? Welcome more abundance into your life. We have been told the story about what being a man is and how sex and what sexuality is and what it should look like. What if there was another way to be able to cultivate this inner energy, this life force, to be able to not only increase well-being, health, and prosperity? I hope you enjoy this conversation with Govinda about masculine sexual mastery. Yeah, so four years ago, I founded this, this center in Costa Rica, South Pacific, called Awake Uvita. And it has been all, a lo- for a long time a vision and a feeling it within me that I wanted to give birth to some places for evolution, transformation, for celebration of life, for a different consciousness, to have a space to explore that like a feeling of non, not, non-resonance with the existing way of life and structures of life and the, the holding of life, the infrastructures and the villages and cities and disconnection from nature and from each other. And yeah, wanting to create something more inspiring and, and efficient to accelerate the, the awakening journey. And That's because I had my own, I've been on my own awakening journey for 22 years almost. And it has worked for me in many levels, allowing me to, to maybe channel some, some things and and to focus on, on that vision and to make it happen, to make it a reality and, and to be, be, to become a part of my own awakening journey, right? The process of founding a place is. Mm-hmm. Very activating, mm-hmm. very confronting, revealing many things and amplifying. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, it's part of my journey and I've been, I've, I've been involved in many things. I've been in many places. I've seen many places, many centers, eco villages, and I had the chance to have an online business that gave me freedom to, to travel and to. To, to be mostly free with my time and my attention. So that has also informed my, my vision in a way, mm-hmm. inspired. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I'm definitely awake. It's a, a space for new seeds to be birthed. And I feel always gratitude to be here. And I was excited to be able to have this conversation with you in person before you head off to Bali. Because I feel the topic about sexuality, energy, there's so many ways to approach this. And there's a very prominent topic in the spiritual world. Even my brother that is not at all in this, he's always making jokes about this, like Tantra, Temple Nights, and all about this, like enjoying this sexual energy. But I really like when I talk to you about sexual energy, how how many benefits you've received and you've witnessed and you've embodied and we can see from what you've created from preserving this energy, from preserving your seed. So Mm -hmm. I want to to hear more about how do you end up learning about keeping your seed, keeping Mm -hmm. your sexual energy and and how has it impacted your life? Yeah, so it it was actually my first spiritual book, the first book that was out of the box and that woke me up to another completely the realm of my soul, let's say. I was 19, second year of university in business school and not very satisfied or fulfilled. And I read that book and it resonated deeply and I felt the calling to give it a, to, to do that. Like I felt the, the preciousness of the sexual essence and that I was dis- wasting it. And that I was kind of missing out. I was just wasting my life 
away, basically. And I mean, this is when you're 19. This 19. is when, when you're 19, you just want to give it all. You're like, this is the, the magnus opus of many. Yeah. When yeah. yeah, but it felt, it didn't feel sustainable and it didn't feel satisfying to do it this way. So I wanted to try another approach and it felt very wise. Like the, the Taoist wisdom, I, I found this book from Mantak Chia about male sexual energy. And I was really resonating with these non-religious, universal, natural principles of the Tao. And it, everything made so much sense. Everything that was explained about the different types of energy and the, the, the power, the importance of that energy and how the, our, our attention, our energy can focus on other things when we decide to keep it. And, and we can open up new realms within our body, mind, soul, especially soul, when it's preserved. It's, yeah, yeah. it's becoming, becoming like keys, keys to new, new doors within for the energy channels to then, to then reveal more dimensions to our being. And then whether it's expressed in, in, in the physical world or if whether it remains internal, it's still, in both cases, it enriches the experience. It enriches the present moment experience mm-hmm. that I'm being with every second of every day. It's ju- it, it just makes it so much more wide. The spectrum of sensations, vibrations, colors, and, and that, are, that are experienced within myself, just being with myself, feeling myself, there is so much more that I can be with. And the more I've been cultivating and keeping this essence, this sexual essence, the richer my inner here and now experience has been, has become. And it's been, it's been a process of also revealing blocks and shadows that don't want to come into this richness and merge into this richness, that want to resist, that want to control, that want to stay in a hurt, separated space. And then the choice of actually not taking it personally and just receiving these waves of refined prana essence, chi energy to, to merge all these blocks Mm -hmm. gradually. And process is still ongoing, but it keeps getting richer and richer, which has kept this process alive. That's why I truly believe and not more than believe I live it and therefore I want, I want to share it. Mm -hmm. I find it very interesting that as you awaken to these teachings of Mantak Chia when you were 19, you were literally going against society's current. What is like, like, I just, I don't know about you, but my teenage years and early adult years and still right now, I just don't spend much time in the, in the regular societal norms or spaces. It's over-sexualized. Mm-hmm. It's about like, who is the guy getting laid the most? Who yeah. is the guy with the most girls? Who is the girl with the most guys? And yeah. why are we not taught or shown these other ways for us men to be more empowered? Because what you're telling me, living an experience that everything's so alive, so vibrant, this could be the foundation of the, really of the spiritual man that society has been longing for, for so long. Yeah. And I'm, I'm convinced it is. And when we say keeping the sexual energy, it doesn't mean not have being sexual. It's very important with, to make a point. You're, yeah. you're still enjoying sexual pleasure and sacred sexual pleasure. It just completely changes mm-hmm. and it, the focus completely changes and it, it, it actually shifts from objectifying each other for just pleasure to actually realizing that each other, we are parts of a soul journey and we can support each other on a, on a, on a path of expanding and revealing our higher dimensions to ourselves. So we can, with a woman, a man can learn what is this yin female energy receive it and to give it in his own young, refined sexual essence, and then see what it is to, to give it 
to receive, to balance it as, as a couple, as, a, as partners, and then within ourselves. So it, it becomes a process that involves so much more of us compared to the usual sexuality, which is just about getting a tra attraction. So the arousal and then the, the action, pleasurable action towards a peak of some kind, and then a, a very violent dissipation of energy, which is also very pleasurable because it's almost one of the only moments that men actually feel their soul is during this orgasmic release of prana. And, and that's the, that's the mistake. It's instead of making every moment an opportunity to be with your soul and to cultivate the ever, every moment fullness and orgasmic state is to sacrifice the permanent orgasmic state and permanent, but constantly moving like waves to sacrifice that for one violent wave like once, three, four, five times a week or more, whatever it is. And more, I mean, I, I know there's some data saying there's some teenagers is like multiple times a day. Yes, and sure. Multiple times a week. Yeah, yeah. so it varies. I'm just uh -huh. giving some kind of averages maybe. But yeah, as a teenager, it can be a lot. Mm -hmm. So understanding that you're not sacrificing this orgasmic peak, you're just kind of not spreading it over a, a wider amount of time, but then cultivating so that it becomes more and more of a permanent thing so that you can just with your own focus and your own presence to yourself, you, you just feel or, an orgasm like that. It just, it's just, it, the intensity is there every moment and, and it, it just feels blissful. It feels orgasmic. You become orgasmic. You don't strive for an orgasm, you become the orgasm. And, and that's what we need to teach men, as you said, because if the man realizes that he is, he is the source of that pleasure and he can always have access to that pleasure, he is that pleasure, then he will stop to try to control the circumstances, the businesses, the women, the lands, the countries, the political parties kind of get what he thinks he needs and he will become more of a servant and a celebrating force of life, which is a completely different paradigm or attitude perspective around life is uh, yeah. Finding the source of fulfillment w within ourselves and learning what are the patterns that dissipate our potential to actually truly be fulfilled. There is the, an illusion of, of goal oriented mind of, especially with men, they think, oh, when I make money, when I have a, a wife or when I build a business, when I'm a millionaire, when, I'll I, be happy. when, when I have a status, happy. yeah, <laughs> when my community will think I'm great, then I will be happy instead of realizing that it starts with actually finding happiness and then spread that and then everything flows from that happiness, but don't reverse it into some kind of goal, conditional happiness, love, fulfillment, etc. So the sexual energy is really the fuel that, that's making that shift easy or accessible. It stops being just a, a spiritual ideal or religious ideal. It becomes something you're, that's really happening within your body your mind and your soul, because you are going to be challenged by this intention to keep the sexual charge because the, the patterns within your mind and your body, the conditional patterns of putting the source of your satisfaction outside of yourself, they will, they will keep, try to keep doing that. They will try to keep your attention completely focused outside and, and dissipating the energy and making you, yeah, making the, the pleasure something that has to come from outside rather than something that's generated from within. Mm -hmm. So these, these blocks, these shadows, they want to keep their existing patterns the same and, and the, our will and our understanding has to come and say, Hey, that's not what I want. I want to open up. I want to release. 
I want the, the energy to flow within and to accumulate within, to blow up. Because there are sometimes blocks that are so old, so, so powerful, so deep, that they require a lot of energy to break mm -hmm. through. And, and sometimes people believe oh, it comes from doing some kind of drugs or medicine journeys. And sometimes it works, but if you don't have enough accumulated life force that is your own and that is under your own control and conscious control, even if you break a, a dam, you have to fill up the space that you, you broke and to inhabit it. Otherwise, it's going to contract again or some kind of entities would come and block it again. So this, this energy is the... the the fuel and the present moment fluid or vibration that comes and fill up the spaces that you open. And if you just open, it's not enough. If you open, but constantly dissipate your energy, you, it's, you cannot remain open because there is not enough pr pressure in the pipes. Mm -hmm. So you can make the pipe all, all straight as you want, but there, there is no water flowing through it. It's, it's going to, again, get entangled and blocked, mm -hmm. whether it's by itself or from external forces. So you want a strong pressure from within that keeps the pipes fully round and straight, as straight as they can be, and throughout your whole body, mind, soul, complex or system, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a big... Uh, I've been talking a lot. I mean, there's so many little points I was making, like, brain taps like here talk about this that i feel like from my understanding is we we've been raised as men society in general but to focus on men to look and long for that peak experience either that paycheck either that salary or the office in that 10th floor because fifth floor is for moguls or whatever either for that beautiful wife the car the house orgasm Big experience. We're looking and longing for that, but then dopamine it happens. Release. Dopamine release. Then it happens, and then what? Yeah. And I remember when I was also studying Mantak Chia and some other Eastern techniques for energy preservation. There was uh, Mantak Chia specifically would say a man has in X amount of releases in his lifetime, and every time you release, you're depleting that energy compared to a woman that can actually regenerate through mm. her own process. Mm. And that really struck me. And now that you're saying about looking for the peak experience. It's like we're trying to reach the peak of the mountain, but in, in reality, we're actually getting further and further yes. away. And, and that's why I feel like there's this over-sexualization of, of the environment, of society, porn being, I think Pornhub is the number one website on the planet. And mm -hmm. in, in, during COVID times, it was like the best seller ever. Mm -hmm. And it, it was just showing us what men are looking out of this longing to fulfill these pipes because mm. as you're emptying the pipe you need to try to fill it up but if you don't have that inner life force then yeah. you fill it up with and that's not even filling them up that's that's using a, a kind of a hack hacking our brain through our senses to trigger these hormones released yeah. through other ways that are not sustainable that actually deplete us mm -hmm. little by little and then our actually the sexual pleasure that we derive from the actual acts become less and less and then people have to use some, all kinds of different deviant practices to try to, again, get the same stimulation or the same sensation, the same connection to their energy body or feeling sensation. And that's why it's never enough. You and know? it's never, never enough. enough. Because it's, never it's, enough. It's, yeah. it's, it's based on external stimulation again and again. Yeah. And what will be some first steps that anybody looking to incorporate this practice into their life. I know it's, it's, a, it's, it's science, it's technology and yeah. it's a practice. So probably we could not dive as deep as we want in this video to do this, but what is the first steps? I guess you need to prepare your consciousness to, to be able to be able to step into that space of, I don't need to release to be a man. Yeah. I don't need yeah. to, I don't need to get to that place that I will never get. Yeah. What would be some first steps for anybody watching this? Well, yeah, the first step is getting the conviction and the intention. That's, and the understanding of, okay, there is many men who have been doing that, some celebrities, big, big athletes, all kinds. There is a history on, on that. There are reasons also in the natural world, in the animal world that show the Even effects. fighters, of, right? I know some yeah. fighters, they don't, they don't release by their coach telling them you yeah, can yeah. because you're going to fight better. You're going to yeah. be more manly. 
Yeah, or yeah. even ayahuasca, ayahuasca ceremony saying, please don't you know, for a while, two weeks, whatever. So yeah, th there is all kinds of reasons. So the will and the understanding, and then it's uh, trying, like playing with it. It's understanding first that the approach of being tight and contracted in sex and in relation to pleasure is, is, is burning the energy. And it's a shift of attitude towards connecting with someone from a place of relaxation. Mm. And it's all about going from tension to relaxation. And that's the key because you cannot fulfill your present moment experience from a place of tightness. Tightness is, is always going to resist the present moment. And it, it is what it, it is. It, that's what tightness is, is a resistance to what is in this moment. So a lot of it is becoming aware of all our tensions in our muscles, in our nervous system, in our ligaments, and then also in our pranic body. And we have a lot just to start with because it starts with the genitals in relation to sex. We can become aware that as there is some pleasure, as the area, as the lingam, penis gets stimulated, we can start to become aware that some muscles start to, to contract. And that's a habit that enhances the pleasure, but that there is all kinds of contraction in the whole area and, and learning that we can actually relax this area. And then it allows for an accumulation of energy, just the fact of relaxing. At first, it might mean that we lose our erection because we are our nervous system is used to... It's like the opposite for our mind. Yeah. Like, okay, this is tightening up, but you're actually yeah. inviting relaxation. Yeah. yeah. And actually, as you accumulate more energy and you relax, as you relax, there will be more prana flowing. And as more prana flows, your erection will become the a consequence of the pranic flow and of the pranic accumulation and not connected to any contraction. And, and actually, the erection will become more stable and more powerful, naturally more powerful, but from a place of completely letting go, relaxed, right? And, and then, but this is already a journey to become aware of this tension, the subtle tensions, mm -hmm. physical and energetic. Letting go. That's also letting like the go. whole, um, mind paradigm shift of letting go of holding on to the yeah. big experience or to whatever. Yeah. yeah. And, and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there are many practices that we, that we can do to gradually reprogram our nervous system to really fully relax and embrace these these sensations that are, can be intense and revealing, and to express these sensations to use love making as a as a space for really revealing our blocks and what what wants us to release and dissipate the energy, and instead of dissipating the energy breathing into it and playing with it and, and relaxing and being playful. Yeah. But it's a different attitude instead of being controlled by your tension that want to get to a goal, you actually used to, you are the one controlling from a place of presence and relaxation and bringing them into the light, bringing these tensions into awareness so that you become more and more aware to able to dis dissipate, dissolve, dissolve them, the, the tightness to open, 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 open. And then as, as you become more and more open, then it's going to become more and more natural and, and pleasurable to accumulate the energy. You will want to accumulate the energy. And when you, you accidentally release through genital orgasm, it will feel really unpleasant and you will feel for several hours less less aliveness in your heart in your mind in your body so going from this shift of seeing or genital orgasm as something desirable and great to gradually realizing that actually it's removing from your experience it's hurting the richness of your experience and if you if you can go through that journey, that's, that's a very important beginning and, and, and it, this is the journey, right? Mm -hmm. But once you are solidified in that, 
then it just becomes more and more accumulation and less and less accidental release because it's not an accumulation of energy, just it doesn't stay in the genital area, right? You accumulate because you relax more and more and mm -hmm. it goes beyond the genitals. Mm -hmm. You will be invited or forced in some way or strongly challenged through your lives, through your work, through your relationship, children, everything. Everything will show you what you have to relax, the next step. And then you will relax and it will be connected to the, an, a bit of a, a, another dimension in your life. And, and then you will feel the energy starts to, to flow more and, and you will feel like a new dimension of your being becomes more powerful, more self-confident, more effortlessly engaged with life in a way that's satisfying or even not needing to engage in life and satisfied by default. So you will, you will go from having to engage with life to reach satisfaction towards becoming satisfied and then letting that satisfaction engage with life in a way that feels correct and, and balanced. So more and more relaxation happening and, and desiring relaxation and, and seeing that great achievements come not from fighting. And that's from this tightness, this, ah, the greatest achievement comes from us becoming channels or force greater than us. The greater insights in our minds also come in a moment where we are not trying too hard. We just kind of open and spacious and relaxed, relaxed, relaxed. exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. I think uh, I, I remember sharing this with some friends many years ago friends from like childhood that like then we got together to other came to a retreat or some medicine work and i told them somehow i feel like spirit wants you to to know that it'll be good for you to start holding your seat and they were looking at me like what do you mean like like this is crazy I'm, i can do the medicines i can do this i'll meditate but don't tell me i i enjoy it so much and i remember it was such a paradigm shift for so many to start understanding that as you say, that you don't have to give in a way to be able to receive just by being you and going back to the first point you shared today. It's not about the orgasm. It's that becoming an orgasmic being mm -hmm. by nature, not looking or longing to mm -hmm. experience that for three seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, like women exactly. can keep going and going and men, unless you develop this practice, that's how you become like a multi-orgasmic man. And uh, Mantak Chia also says that the, as you age, as you ripen in your age, the more you release your seed, the more you orgasm, genital orgasm, and release your sperm, the more you start to lose this life force, and it actually can be detrimental for your health. Yeah, for sure. And the really cool thing about this is that we become scientists, we become alchemists, mm -hmm. because you were explaining the process for somebody that is very new to this. You can listen to this, you can read about this, but until you don't practice it, you become your scientist and you start to see how life starts to shape based upon your interaction with your own alchemy. As you were saying, life will tell you where you have to relax even more, where you have to surrender even more. And you're like, oh, I've, I figured out the game. Start doing a practice like this. This is when you start to see where you have your attachments and where are you holding on to life. Yes. But I want to share, I want you to share something about semen retention, sexual, ret sexual energy, renewal or circulation as you're doing and abundance because mm -hmm. it's, I think, as you were saying, you relax and you start to receive more. How has this also, how do you see that it has affected your frequency and vibration to abundance and manifestation? Yeah, for sure. So the, the, as I said, the first thing is that it, it helps me connect to the feeling of abundance. So I, I was not abandoned. I was a student. And then I was, I started to work, but mostly I was a student living on 300 euros a month. And, and I started to be able to connect to sensations of abundance, not the full thing, but I started to understand that actually abundance is a feeling. It's, it's an experience that, that is, that I'm feeling within my own body, mind, soul. It's, it's me. It's how I feel. And. And th that's where it starts actually. 
And it's not whether I have a lot of money on a bank account or in cash or here or there or assets. This is going to influence circumstances and th decisions in my life and w how my senses are satisfied. But it's not going to actually reach the core of my being and how I vibrate internally, how my organs are vibrating, how my heart is vibrating and how my, my brain is perceiving reality. So I started to, to realize that abundance was a state and I started to cultivate abundance as a state and, and then to play with it to play with it and to, to, to come to some form of self-confidence about that state as mine and as not being conditional to getting a job or not getting a job or being recognized by someone or, you know, these external circumstances that we associate as a condition to abandon. I started to see abandons as not conditional and then I started to have a completely different attitude to the, to the outside realm and to work. I, I started to take much more risk to just say, this is how it is for me, leave it, go for it or leave it. I was ready to let go or even a comfortable situation and, and risk it all, invest in, in perceived risky things and, and just being much more relaxed about external abundance from it, the outside it could seem like you were being more reckless and irrational yes like for as you're saying i was picturing you being filled up your pipes filled up with this prana and life force yes. so you knew you could navigate that yeah because i knew that whatever happens it's actually not going to take away from me the true abundance uh -huh. so i can play basically play and play and and life has to be for me interesting and playful and and if there is no risk there is no play in a way right the the sense of play is like taking taking new steps exploring the unknown and and exploring the unknown means putting away the known for a while and and not yeah not knowing what will happen so that's that that has been for me a main reason why i manifested abundance also externally to some, to some significant extent, which is always relative. I'm not a billionaire, but I, I manifested a, a multi-million dollar business after, before my 30 years age. And, and then that brought up, that was my next challenge that brought up a lot of my own tensions and blocks and, and immature behaviors and, and fears in relation to this new situation that was then being worked on and relaxed. And then I could reach true relaxation in relation to this external abundance so that it could actually stick around rather than being dissipated. Dissipated again. Because huh? it's yeah. the same thing. It's relatively similar. If you're not at ease and relaxed. And that's why when people who are not raised in rich families get suddenly very rich, very often, it's, it, it's gone almost immediately or they're just being so irresponsible with it. Like lottery, lottery winners, they, it destroys their life and all kinds of stories because it's in your DNA and you have to be relaxed. It has to feel natural. And that's a whole reprogramming that you have to go through so that you can actually hold space for this other type of abundance that is also social in some way that involves other people because financial abundance is, is some kind of social construct that other people recognize and honor. And, and therefore you can, you can conduct and direct energy and resources in the external world with this external abandon. But what matters is you being able to conduct and, and direct your inner resources first. And, and then you, you will be challenged to the external, at least that's how it was for me. For some people, it goes the other way around, but yeah. Beautiful. I'm sure there's going to be some ladies watching this or couples watching this. What recommendation and advice could you give to the women out there watching this? How can they support their men on this or how can they, I know it's, it's something very personal for a man to take a decision. I'm going to start this practice. I'm going to start this journey, mm -hmm. but maybe there's a lady watching this and she's like, I, I would love to, I, I see some of the, 
the weaknesses that you've brought up in the conversation in my man, how could they bring it up to their man and, or how can they also support them if they're already on this journey? Yeah, well, I think there is a, mis a misunderstanding from men about what is actually truly satisfying for a woman. And women have sometimes some kind of fear or complex of, around talking about it because they, men can be sensitive on this topic. And then women don't want to upset the man and turn away the man. And so women have, the woman, I think, should make the man feel loved and, and, and ex explain to them that it's not so much about, that sex is not about performance. And it's not about for them about the peak. It's about the depth and it's about the play and it's about the, the freedom. And it's, it's about emerging. It's, a, it's more about emerging. And I think women, they more naturally feel that and embody that and want that. And the men, for the men, it's more about like this, this kind of build up, build up and this intensity or this kind of like performance oriented towards some, some kind of imaginary goal of, oh, my woman has to feel exactly that. And if she's not like this reacting and making these sounds and this face, that means she's not satisfied. And it's, it's not actually truly And I have like to that. release a lot because that would mean that I'm a yeah. strong, real man. Yeah. And, and so having this conversation and, and, and inviting the man or as a couple, choosing to explore arousal without a goal and play without a goal. And I'm, I'm sure many couples already play with that, but, but bringing really that into the, the flow of, hey, we are not slaves to a release. It, it's not, it's not something that needs to happen. That's the first step It's like playing without this, having that in mind that this should happen, that this is the, the pattern, breaking free from a pattern and, and, and playing with other ways to meet each other, to play with each other, to satisfy each other, to feel, to feel each other and, and realizing that it's a multidimensional meeting really, really. And the woman is, is more naturally multidimensional. The man is more naturally split between the, the mind, the head and the genitals. Like there is this somewhere, somewhere in the man, there is more of a split. And then the man tries to rationalize and has these visions and ideas of what sex should look like. And then he has his actual genital desires and, and ways to pleasure pleasure himself, but then there is not a proper channels and connections that unite these two realms. And for women, it's more natural to feel that their genitals actually naturally connect to their solar plexus and their, their heart and their throat and their brain. And, and for the men, it's a journey to get mm -hmm. to that. And it's in part due to the fact that our genitals are mostly external. And for the woman, they are internal, so they are more naturally connected to the rest of their body. But yeah, yeah, the woman also making, yeah, like, I don't know how, how that actually happens in practice because every man has a different sensitivity and level of readiness and attachment to orgasm, et cetera. So there is no universal recipe to, to get into that direction. But for a woman sharing what she wants and, and what's actually not satisfying in a way that makes the man still loved and honored and recognized for his gift, that's a big step, right? Mm -hmm. Many women don't even dare to share that they are not satisfied, actually, that they feel something is missing. And I think growth starts by acknowledging dissatisfaction at any level where it is. And if we can do that as a couple, that's actually very empowering for the relationship mm -hmm. to, to go through different levels of our soul journey so that our relationship is not the comfort zone that meets each other's comfort zone. And then we stay there together because that feels good. It's actually a, a spiral, an ascending spiral where we can grow together into new levels of initiation. Mm -hmm. I, I feel this. This practice for men, when supported by their women, this would be amazing remedy for 
for, for lots of the disruption that happens in couples. Because I think, as you were saying, like it's a big percentage of women that are dissatisfied. And rarely they talk about the peak experience, suppose the orgasm. They're always talking about the foreplay and the, all Jerry. the preliminaries. Everything that many men are missing out, they're just looking to release, to explode. And women are on the other exactly. side. Exactly. It's because of the trying to make sex into some goal-oriented uh -huh. act, which uh -huh. it's not. It's about being with each other. Uh -huh. And if you're not in the, the foreplay is just being with each other and the during is being with each other. And yeah, woman, yeah, I, I've experienced woman being very satisfied by presence and it's all about being present and relaxed. And that's it. It's it, if you are present and relaxed, you naturally embody the male energy because you are male, male polarized and that's going to be satisfied if you're present and relaxed. It, whatever you do, it, mm -hmm. whatever, however you play, however the other person turns you on and however you want to interact with the other person is going to be fun because you're revealing the truth of your male essence and how you're being influenced by this other person in a relaxed way, in a, but while being present to the moment, see, looking, how is this moment touching me? How am I touched now? And how does that make me want to touch the other? just that and not where am I going? Where are we going? Where am I bringing her? Where am I bringing myself? It's not about where we are bringing each other. It's how this moment is informing our, our merging and with between consciousness and energy, really that the Shiva Shakti, these tantric principles or heavens and the sky and the earth and Taoism, uh, yin yang. How is this merging happening? How is this play happening in the present moment? It's not what it's becoming. It's what it is. I guess. And, and it's not. And actually, if you focus on becoming, you are killing it. Yes. You're killing it. Mm -hmm. You're killing the richness and the, the power, power of the play. Yeah. I just got a full body goosebumps because I was, your words were taking me to the place of it takes away the pressure to be anything or go anywhere or do anything. Just be here now, like Ramdas would say. Yeah, um, it's in all the spiritual traditions mm -hmm. and the focus, especially in Eastern, but it's there in all there, of them and it's know. the essence of all of them. And, and sex is a doorway to the sacred. It is sacred. And the way that we make it non-sacred is that we just waste the potential. So the sin is actually a missing, the, missing what it can be. It's mm -hmm. not that sex is sinful. Is that sex, if we don't learn to use this technology or this tool in its highest potential, we are, we are missing out on something really massive spiritually. And, and it's okay. It's not bad. It's nobody's judging you. You will just judge yourself at the end of your life. You will be that, okay, that was my life. It could have been so much more if I tapped into that power. And, and there is any time is a good time to have this realization of my life could be so much more rich and powerful. Mm -hmm. And at the end of my life, my end of life review could be so much more like aligned with what my higher self wants to see happen. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much, brother. Very grateful to, to receive this wisdom. And I'm excited to, to hear more about um, the upcoming workshops that you'll be doing and hosting some, some more classes for, for us men to keep learning. Yeah, online first and then again in person. Yeah. If anybody wants to reach out to you, how can they connect with you? So, yeah, the, I have email. So, govinda at awake.cr. I have also Facebook, Govinda and Jai. And all on Awake website, there will be the the workshops there and the links to the, the classes. Mm -hmm. So awake.cr is the website. Right now it's still not on the website, but could be govinda at awake.cr. Yeah. Amazing. Thank yeah. you very much, brother. Thank yeah. you for your time. Thank mm -hmm. you, brother. Mm -hmm. Beautiful mm -hmm. invitation mm -hmm. and space holding. It's nice to commune in this wisdom. To and be continued. This is like part one. I'm sure there's so much more <laughs> to be shared. There is a lot <laughs> to, to go into the, mm -hmm. the, the juice of it for sure. Mm-hmm.